Looks like a good bishop's miter is on the chopping block, but it, it did it need to come to this? Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, looks like Bishop Joseph Strickland may not be Bishop of Tyler, Texas for very long. What's happening? On Saturday, Brad, Pope Francis had a very important meeting regarding the future of Bishop Joseph Strickland. He met with the head of the Dicastery for Bishops, that's Archbishop Robert Prevost. At the meeting was also Archbishop Christophe Pierre, who is the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. And on the top of the agenda was the resignation of Joseph Strickland. Uh, the modus operandi is this. Uh, Bishop Strickland is going to be asked to resign voluntarily. And if he refuses, they will compel him to do so. A direct order from Pope Francis will force him to tender his resignation. Now, this, of course, is a fallout uh, from the June apostolic visitation. And remember, Church Militant broke the story about two bishops being asked to investigate uh, Bishop Joseph Strickland. Uh, the uh, the investigation was conducted on two levels. First of all, there was the charge that by making certain statements, particularly on his social media posts, he was creating public scandal. And then, of course, there was the question of diocese and management, a uh, high number of resignations from the courier. Nothing serious, nothing particularly scandalous, but uh, these issues, without being very specific, were brought up. Also, the existence of a rather controversial conservative community called Veritatis Splendor in the diocese. So let's focus for a moment, uh, leaving the financial things to the side and, you know, turnover, uh, a, a high turnover rate at the school, mentioned it. Set those things aside for a minute. Let's focus on the public criticism of Pope Francis that's uh, been given by Strickland. What are uh, a couple of rather glaring examples of that? Well, uh, one of the best examples, of course, is uh, his uh, two recent pastoral letters. In the first, he raises major questions about the synod on synodality, whether this is going to overturn the Catholic faith as we have known it. Uh, then, in the most recent uh, uh, pastoral letter, which we did a uh, Rome dispatch on, he talks about the danger of the synodal process introduced using uh, female deacons, but uh, in September, but, but, but basically he is questioning uh, Pope Francis uh, undermining the deposit of faith, and that has really irritated uh, the hierarchy. You know, that goes back to a tweet, I think it was about May 12th or so, that uh, he was talking about Patrick Coffin, and in that tweet he said Pope Francis actually has a program for undermining the faith. He rejects that program, and that was a glaring one. Uh, there was also last year, uh, uh, September or so, 2022, there was a, a petition or uh, a correction, I should say, issued uh, about uh, Pope Francis. Could you talk about that? Uh, there was, uh, uh, yes, uh, a rather detailed, uh, you know, a uh, petition put up for signatures for bishops, uh, including Bishop Athanasius Schneider and Bishop Rob Mozart, uh, signed this. A number of scholars and priests signed this uh, letter, and it virtually accused Pope Francis of heresy. Let me read a couple of statements. Uh, this was in response to Pope Francis's most recent uh, note on the liturgy, where Francis said, everyone is involved to the wedding of the Lamb, the wedding supper of the Lamb. And uh, the petition said that the claim that faith is the only requirement for worthy reception of the Holy Eucharist was condemned by the Council of Trent as a heresy. So uh, uh, what's being talked about is the fact that this letter, which Bishop Strickland signed, seemed to be accusing Pope Francis directly of heresy. Yeah, because, I mean, he was a top signer on that, and he was a key line from there. They didn't just clarify the doctrine. They said Pope Francis has indicated by his words and actions that he holds 
the view expressed by the natural meaning of the words in Desiderio, which talks about that very thing. So it, it's very tough to pin down Pope Francis oftentimes because he wakes, you know, he'll clarify something two years later and say, well, I meant to say this or that. So it's always difficult. And, and a material heresy, you get it wrong or, or ambiguous phrases that seems to be wrong and you could be taking it the wrong way. And that's what Rome Dispatch does every day. We're trying to keep uh, the Catholic sense. How Pope Francis necessarily means something, that's between him and God, and he'll be judged on Judgment Day. But generally speaking, his words can be understood in some stretch of the fact of either misrepresentation or half-baked sentence or non-complete thought or whatever, ambiguous phraseology. And we always say, well, to be Catholic, you have to take it in this way. Uh, and it's great that Strickland would bring up church teaching, especially regarding reception of Holy Communion. Uh, church Mill has been doing that for years, clarifying what needs to be clarified, especially if it's ambiguous, equivocal, vague, partially stated, etc. And Pope Francis is a legendary for his half-baked or short, shortened sentences, never showing all of his cards at one time. But to accuse him of formal heresy, of saying, oh, well, he, that's what he means is to be heretical, well, that's, that's a difficult, as, as always. Uh, what's another glaring uh, example of Strickland's criticism of Pope Francis that may have crossed the line? Well, uh, in reference to Pope Francis, uh, Strickland tweeted on the 12th of May this year, he said, Pope Francis is the Pope, but I reject his program of undermining the deposit of faith. Uh, just yesterday, in fact, he uh, tweeted again uh, an article uh, published by Where Peter Is, which is the very liberal website that sticks up for Pope Francis's, you know, program of reform. And uh, he said this, Strickland said this, this doesn't sound like the Bride of Christ, but instead like an organization merely rooted in this world. I oppose no one who stands with the truth Jesus Christ has revealed. The opposition, division, and schism comes from those who are turning from Jesus. So I guess, you know, the, the question, Jules, what's the, what's the Catholic faithful's response to this story? Because... Of course, everyone loves Bishop Strickland, and we're all uh, horrified sometimes at the things Pope Francis says, and it needs to be clarified continually. Uh, but how, how is a Catholic supposed to take all this? Well, first of all, uh, the vast majority of Catholics on social media are supporting uh, Bishop Strickland. They see him as a martyr, and uh, there's, of course, definitely the sense that the Mo the Vatican quote-unquote persecutes him, the more he's going to look like a martyr and therefore he's going to draw more support. And the response to the pillar story was so overwhelming that about around 14 hours ago, Bishop Strickland responded on Twitter and he said, for any who may be concerned, be assured I am Jesus strong. I am Jesus strong. Pray for Pope Francis and Christ's bride, the church. She has weathered turmoil before, and she will continue to do so. Viva Cristo Rey. Uh, so there is this group, of course, that is, uh, uh, you know, no holds barred in support of Bishop Strickland. Uh, then there are those who are more cautious and saying, uh, well, we support him, but he should have been uh, more prudent in his tweets. And, uh, you know, he could have be, he could have uh, said things without directly accusing Pope Francis of heresy, for example, signing that petition. And uh, then the, there are the Pope splainers who basically, you know, for them, Francis can do no wrong. Uh, and they say things like uh, Bishop Strickland was totally wrong to criticize the Synod on synodality because the Synod has no magisterial weight and cannot produce uh, 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 magisterial documents. And so, you know, Bishop Strickland is simply leading his flock uh, down a blind alley and, you know, putting them up to false uh, conclusions. Uh, so th these are the kind of uh, uh, responses. But interestingly, Bishop Strickland uh, has not given up and is continuing to remain strong on Twitter, on social media, uh, continuing to you know, respond to what's going on. You know, it seemed almost like the smart money would be for Rome to promote him up to, a, a, you know, promote him out of office instead of just cut him loose. You cut him loose, he could be a loose cannon going off everywhere, kind of maybe a, like a like a Cardinal Burke or somebody. But if you promote him 
up into a bean counter or something, you know, in the Vatican, you still keep him under wraps and busy with something else. So it'll be uh, interesting to see how all this plays out. Uh, certainly a, a good bishop must, must stand up for the truth. And Bishop Strickland has done that better than any other U.S. bishop, especially in these difficult times, uh, accusing the Pope of heresy or having a program of undermining the faith. Well, it's simply a way of shortening a bishop's time of being able to continue to clarify the doctrine, so, which desperately needs clarifying today, especially by bishops. Our Lord instructed the people to respect even sinful men who exercise legitimate authority when he said in Matthew 23, 1, scribes and Pharisees have sat on the chair of Moses, all things, therefore whatsoever they say uh, shall say to you, observe and do. But according to their works, do ye not, for they say and do not. So pray for Bishop Strickland that he has many more years of shepherding the flock because we need him. Jules, thank you so much for helping to dial in this very difficult story for our viewers. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.